Okay. So what's the company's philosophy on medicating the patient? Okay. I think, you know, being conservative with medications is best. You only use morphine when it becomes needed. And I think my company... We treat the symptoms. We don't treat the patients. Okay. We are very instance, conservative. We have a patient medication. who had uh, low blood pressure. She felt fine. Didn't treat it. Patients with high blood sugar. She felt fine. Didn't treat it. She was not on hospice. They'd be pumping her with insulin if it was high, pumping her with sugar if it was low. If you're not feeling ill, you're not getting medication. Because I every see. medicine that you don't, you're not on, you know, the. the too many other symptoms to worry about. Right. We treat what we see. We, we'll have um, patients with high blood pressure that are on three blood pressure medicines. And even after the nurse coming in, so you know the patient has more like low blood pressure right now. You know, let's ask the doctor, the patient's doctor, if maybe we could take them off, try try the patient without that blood pressure, and we'll monitor. And you know what? Not only do in this one particular case we save the the patient, you know, that copay because that was not part of our service, you know, um, paying for that medicine. So we saved them a lot of money, and the patient felt a little better. Okay. Started eating better, walking around a little bit more. Couldn't believe it. It was good. Okay. Hospice is good. Okay. Oh, and an hour. Okay. So, Ken, should the patient need extensive <coughs> symptom management, will the patient automatically be placed in an inpatient unit? Or will continuous care be able to be done in the home? Do we know what that's talking about? Let's say you have an exacerbation. It's 2 in the morning. You're not breathing well. You're panicking. You call the nurse. She tells you to start the regimen that you had already planned. And she is on her way. You start the regimen. She gets there. It hasn't worked yet. She starts her second tier plan. She stays with you continuously for hours, as long as it's needed. You do not go to the hospital. You do not want to. We are there with you throughout the duration. We don't just show up, give you the meds, and call me back if it doesn't work. Okay. Now, inpatient, there are some hospices that have an inpatient unit. Uh, retreat Hospital, Hospice of Virginia Youth has 10 beds at Retreat Hospital, so they prefer what? Inpatient. Nothing's wrong with that. Okay. But as soon as you your symptoms manage, then you go back home. Okay? So you might as well just treat it at home. That's, that's what we've done. Yeah, because everybody, I, I, you know, most of the time people want to stay at home. So that's, we're, we're all about that. Okay. Medicare approved hospice diagnosis. Go ahead, Anne Marie. All those. <laughs> all those people. Yeah. I mean, we all have friends and family. So we're, we're, in this room, we're all talking about pulmonary issues, okay? But, you know, there are other, other um, diagnoses, yeah. um, okay? Now, adult failure to thrive, and, oh, button here, okay. Ooh, I have a new choice, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Adult failure to thrive, and I don't have on here, stability. Those are those catch-alls. Okay, so before, you know, on the, on the um, so quiz. What, what that means is uh, you go out to see a patient. There's really no specific diagnosis that is causing her decline or his decline. They are generally just in debility or failure to thrive. They're losing weight. They're having infections continuously. They're falling. They're unable to care for themselves. They're becoming incontinent. They're confused. <coughs> they have all these symptoms, but nothing definitive. That would be failure to thrive or ability. It's another diagnosis that we couldn't fit under. And then we take care of all the medicines that's, that we see as needed. Sort of. <laughs> I'm still learning. It depends on what the major problem is, so It's very case specific. It's not a you know, hospice, it's not a general. While we're there, yes. who, who would determine if you were paid? Who would determine? After you, you make this diagnosis? Yes, the nurse would. And they accept that? Yes. And it's also with the physician's input when we write the certificate saying what we're admitting for. The doctor has to sign off saying that's perfect. So you're admitting <coughs> one 
specific thing for all of these things. For instance, CHS, the criteria that Medicare specifies, you must hit in order to qualify for the Medicare analysis benefit under CHS. The ability has to see We all have criteria. Many times I go out and I look at patients and I say, I'm sorry, they just don't meet criteria at this time. Right. You know, not enough weight loss, not confused enough. I know it's true. They, in order to qualify, you're on for, that fat now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alzheimer's is actually the hardest one to qualify for, um, and it's the hardest disease because they're very hard to take care of in the home. And I go out, and they're walking and talking right there. They are not eligible for houses just Wait, because they walk and talk. So they don't give you a time limit. Yes, because I, in fact, I was just talking to a friend of mine this week, and his mother-in-law has it, and they was putting her in a home, like you said. She, she can, can go on memory thing. Mm -hmm. And she's fine. Five minutes. She probably doesn't think it's, she it's, is. It's uh, seven words within 24 hours. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So if I go out and they don't talk, I'll send someone the next day. I have my, I kind of know. I'll send someone the next day, and they'll go out and they'll say, no, they still haven't talked. Yeah. I'll talk to the caregivers. Do they talk? They say yes or no. They're not having meaningful, meaningful conversations. They're not responding to you in sentences. Just because they don't recognize where they are, who they are, or who their children are, doesn't mean they're ultimately wrong. All right. I mean, you like really her daughter says she treated the mail today, and she says, oh, yes. But she did tell us she got the babies down the street and across the street also. Not a little girl, but she knew she got the mail. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and she said it's not a Okay. So the benefits of hospice. Okay. You have a personal in-home medical team with doctors, nurses, home health aides, and supervision <coughs> of the patient's care. Yeah. Yes, you also get a social worker who you will help you with any end-of-life decisions that need to be made, um, any kind of final arrangement with wills or uh, funeral arrangements even. Um, you also get a counselor. Psychosocial counselor, you'll get a spiritual counselor, all of course if you want it. Is that next? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're just speeding off. Hey, I want to make sure it's light air, y'all don't find it, fall asleep. Okay? You know, and this is one of the questions when you are interviewing hospice companies. You know, we come out two to three times a week, uh, scheduled. Mainly, scheduled. In the middle of the night, we'll be out. Okay? If you <laughs> want us. If you want us. <laughs> They're not going to show up in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, I was hoping they would be in my mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we have the chaplain. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. We have an individualized plan of care for the patient and the family needs. Okay. We're your support system. I like to tell people that when you're at hospice, you know, you should feel like you're at grandma's house. You feel loved. Supported, treated with kindness, dignity, and respect, and you're safe. Okay? Anything less than that? You need to, to let that hospice company know so they can get with the program. Okay? We'll change hospice companies. That's your right. Okay? Uh, when it becomes medically necessary, the patient is given continuous 24 7 in home care for symptom management. It can also be done in an inpatient unit, too. That's your right. Okay? You don't have to go somewhere. Sit right at home. Okay. All of the DME uh, equipment is provided. Medications, depending on what your hospice diagnosis is. Personal care items. We provide shampoo, uh, conditioner, adult pens, trucks, all that stuff. As related to the hospice diagnosis. The social worker helps with the medical care. Yeah, I had all this. Okay, moving right along. Now, this is something that everybody should know. You know, you have your medical team, and we call it the interdisciplinarian team. And that includes your nurse, your medical social worker, spiritual care, your chaplain, volunteer, hospice aide, and bereavement counselor. So you have quite a team on your side taking care of you. Some other things that we do. Question. Oh, I'm sorry. Question. <coughs> I this is uh, not delicate, but I notice you don't have a doctor on there. Lucy. I'm sorry, we do doctor doctor. should be on there. And, the doctor is part of the team. And, okay, uh, but uh, 
most of them uh, don't want to be bothered with that. We Let's actually, be honest. no, it's true. But our doctors, according to Medicare, we have to sit down at a table every two weeks and discuss your case. With if the, the physician has to be there. Yes. Okay. The last question. Shut up. Who signs the death certificate? Um, that's up to the family. It can be the primary care physician or it can be our physician. Mm -hmm. Primary care physician or our physician. But it's still in Virginia has to be a physician. Mm -hmm. Yes, but in Virginia the registered nurse pronounces your death. So if you die in your home, the nurse can get called out and she will pronounce. Call the funeral home. The funeral home comes right to the house and picks Thanks them up. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. 